Hey, John Benitez here with Marin Bikes, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to remove and reinstall your internally geared rear wheel. So in order to remove and reinstall the rear wheel onto the bike, we're gonna need a few tools. Uh, here we have a set of needle nose pliers, four millimeter Allen key, five millimeter Allen key, a 15 millimeter box wrench, and a torque wrench with a five millimeter head on it. So you may be noticing that there is no rear derailleur on this bike, and that's because all the gearing is contained within this hub here. So what I'm gonna be showing you is how to properly remove the wheel from the bike in a few steps. So the first step is we're gonna be reducing some of the cable tension off of the internally geared hub. To do this, we're gonna basically shift the bike into the highest gear, which in this bike is gear number seven. So before we remove the rear wheel, you wanna take note of how much tension is on the chain. Um, in order to remove the rear wheel properly, we have to alleviate this tension as well. But we also wanna keep in mind that you want this same tension when the rear wheel is installed on the bike. So the next step is to remove this cable from the hub. To do so, we're gonna need our needle nose pliers here. You're gonna take your fingers and easily rotate the hub towards you. You're gonna grab this nut here with the needle nose pliers and you're gonna gently rotate it out off. You can let this go. What I like to do is instead of hang, having this hang like so, I like to remove the housing from the bike so it's fully out of the way here. And with that, we're on to our next step. So the next step is we have to alleviate the chain tension now. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we're gonna break loose these five millimeter bolts here. There's two on this side and there's two on the non-drive side as well. So grabbing our five millimeter Allen key, you can basically break these loose like so. You don't need to take them out all the way, you just need to get them loose. That's pretty good, I'll repeat on the Opposite side, like so. Now those are loose. So now we're gonna grab our four millimeter Allen key and we're gonna basically loosen these bolts so the wheel goes further into the frame, alleviating the chain tension here. I'd like to do a couple turns on that side, a couple turns on the opposite side. It's kind of hard to tell, but as we get these closer and closer and break these loose, what we can start seeing is we can basically start pushing the wheel into the frame of the bike, little by little. And as you can see by the chain, the chain is now starting to droop. That's a good sign. So we're almost there. And now you can see the chain's really drooping. So we're pretty much at the point where we can probably take this rear wheel off now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our 15 millimeter box wrench here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna break these bolts on the hub axle loose. So start loosening these. You don't need to take them completely off. You just need to break them loose like so. And as you can tell, this rear wheel already wants to come out. So now that these are broken loose, you're gonna let the wheel drop out, take any of the housing and cables out of the way, grab the chain, pull it off the rear wheel, and then take the rear wheel and set it aside. And you have successfully removed your rear wheel from this bike. All right, so you did what you needed to do on your rear wheel, and now it's time to reinstall it. But before we do that, you wanna make sure that your chain is actually on the chain ring here. So just be sure this is always on there and not just hanging free, cause it'll make the install a lot easier. I like to basically just set it aside and make sure that it's partially on. And now that that's done, now we can go ahead and reinstall the rear wheel. So now that the axle bolts are finger tight, we're gonna grab our 15 millimeter box wrench here and we're gonna tighten them down more. And you wanna get it to a point where it's snug on one side and snug on the other side. So now that that's done, 
I can stop holding the rear wheel and now I can finish tightening these. I like to place my knee under the rear wheel so that I can get more pressure on the box wrench. Like so. Once that's done, you're, you'll notice that we still have a lot of slack in this chain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our four millimeter Allen key and we're gonna start backing these out. And as you can see, it's starting to move the stay out a little bit more. Now keep in mind, you wanna adjust both sides equally. Because what's gonna happen is if you don't, is it's gonna throw your rear wheel at an angle depending on how much tension you put on one side versus the other. So if you can see that, the wheel is definitely a little bit more to the non-drive side right now. And because of that, we're gonna start tensioning this side down a little bit more. So you wanna just do this a few turns at a time, switching sides. This might take a little bit, but slowly and surely what will start happening is you'll see that the chain will start getting tension put on it. Couple turns there. Couple turns here. So as you can see, the chain's really starting to get some tension behind it now. Make sure that you double check that the wheel is properly aligned. We still have quite a bit of slack in this chain, so let's keep going. We're getting close. Make sure your wheel's aligned before you finish getting the wheel, wheel properly aligned. And I'd say right about there, is perfect. I like to give the wheel a spin just to check to make sure that it's aligned between the chain stay and the seat stay. And from my perspective, it looks good. Check the chain tension. I also like to rotate the cranks a bit, making sure that the chain tension is evenly dispersed. Feels pretty good. And with that, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our five millimeter Allen key and you're gonna tighten these bolts snug. Repeat the same process on the opposite side, like so. And now grab your torque wrench and I have this set to, looks like 13 Newton meters between 12 and 15 is perfect. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten these down. That one's torqued. That one's good. Go to the other side. Torqued. And there we go. The rear wheel is now installed on the bike, but it's not quite done yet. So now we have to reinstall the cable back onto the hub. Now, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the cable onto the hub. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the housing here and we're gonna place it back into the stop right there like so. Next, we're gonna take our cable and we have to carefully align it within a specific portion of the hub here it's basically like a cradle of sorts for the cable. As you can see, it's around this one, this piece here, and over here. Now, rotate the hub down like so, and get the housing there. Get the cable properly back into the cradle like that. Once it's in there, and you can see that it's in there, go ahead and let go, and the cable is reinstalled onto the hub. Now, if your bike comes equipped with a belt-driven drivetrain instead of a chain-driven drivetrain, removing and reinstalling the rear wheel is the same process. But 
The only difference is that with a belt drive, is the tension that the belt sees is gonna be a lot more crucial. You want it to be very even. You don't want it to be too tight. You don't want it to be too loose. If you're not entirely sure what tension this should be at, before you start removing the rear wheel, just take a tape measure and you're gonna measure the amount of deflection between the belt and the chain stay here. Once you do that, you can take the rear wheel off, change your flat if you need to, when you go to reinstall the rear wheel and you get it centered and you're tightening up the dropouts here, take your tape measure and just try to replicate that same distance of deflection that you measured first. John again here with Marin Bikes. Thanks for tuning in for another Marin technical video. Uh, we hope that this was an easy walkthrough for you. If you run into any issues doing this sort of thing, please don't hesitate to get in touch with your local Marin dealer. They will be more than happy to help you out. Um, aside from that, we'll see you out there on the road.